In this video tutorial, we're going to have a look at Python methods. Let's consider this computer program. What we have here is a class, and you can see I've called the class demo class, and within it, you can see that we have a definition of what looks like a function. Because if you look at this here, you, you have DEF, and we have this colon, and here I've given a name demo underscore method, and I have these brackets here, and that looks pretty much like a function that we've seen earlier in the playlist. But when we define a function within a class, it's referred to as a method. That's why I've actually called this demo underscore method. Now here we can see that within the function, I have this one program statement. And all this does is print, I am the demonstration method. So as a method, it doesn't really do much. It just simply outputs this string to the screen. And overall, this class doesn't do much. But I'm only using it as a demonstration because I want to introduce methods without the complication of algorithms getting in the way. Now this line here, what this is going to do, it's going to use this function and I'm going to pass in this class, demo class, which is the class I'm looking at here, to see what the members of this class are. And what we can see as these are the members. And we've seen these in the previous videos in the playlist. But the one I want to, to look at is this one here, demo method. Because this is the one that I was responsible for typing in, which is this one here. This is the method I typed in, and this method is part of the class because we've seen it's been indented four places. When we write object-orientated programs, we actually will want to make an instance of this particular class. Now, when we make that instance, we have an object. And here you can see that I have empty brackets. Now, this is not what we would normally do if we wanted the class from which we would create an object. And I'll come on to talk about that later in this particular video. Let's now consider this particular program here. You can see we have the same class with the same method. But on this line, what I'm doing, I'm creating an instance of the class. This is a constructor program statement. And here you can see I have got the name my underscore object. Now this name will be bound to an instance of this particular class. Now on this line, I'm going to use this function, and on this occasion, instead of passing in the name of the class, I'm going to pass in this, my underscore object. And this is the name that's bound to the object that's now in the execution space. And it's going to print the members of this object. And what we will get is this. And if you look, you'll see that these are the same as the ones for the demo class. And they should be, because this object that we created on this line is based on the class. And we can see that we have the demo method appearing here. And of course, this demo method is the one that I typed in the class. But of course, what we have to realize now is that this demo method is now the method that belongs to the object that this name is effectively pointing to. Let's now consider this computer program here. You can see we have the same class and the same demo method. And on this line, I'm creating an instance of the class demo class. In other words, an object. And on this line, what you can see, I have what term dot notation. Here we can see we have a dot or a full stop and on this side we have the name that is bound to the object and on this side we have the name of the method that appears inside the object so this is a message that is effectively asking for this method to execute in other words we can say that this line is messaging the object where this object is an instance of the demo class. So what we should expect to see is this string being printed. But let's have a look at what actually happens. 
well it doesn't work it crashes and if we look down here at the type error it says demo underscore method takes zero positional arguments but one was given let's look to the actual definition of the demo method and in particular look at these brackets here you can see there's nothing in them which means as a programmer I have put nothing there which suggests that this particular method is not going to receive anything there is no formal parameters there and if you come down here to look at the type error it says demo underscore method takes zero positional arguments which is correct because I haven't put anything in here as you can see the error goes on to say but one was given okay so let's go and have a look at this message and now we'll have a look at these brackets well there's nothing in there I haven't put anything in there but it is saying that this message actually gives an argument gives an actual parameter that's going to be passed to this particular method now at first sight this doesn't appear to make any sense all right let's fix this particular problem let's have a look at how I can alter the program so that it will work so we won't get the type error that we're seeing in front of us well this is the program here and I've made one slight amendment and you can see here in the brackets I've put the word self let's run the program now and see what happens well you can see that it works in fact this string has been put to the program output now what's happened here well this is the class this is the definition of the method that appears within the class this line creates an instance of the class this now is the name that is bound to the instance bound to the object that's just been created by this line and on this line we have a message now this full stop is the part of the dot notation this is the name that's bound to the object and this is the method that's going to be invoked when this message is sent to the object and this then will execute and this string appears here what has actually happened although you can see in these brackets here I've nothing in them to match the fact that this is expecting to receive something it means that this overall message is responsible for passing something to here now the question is what is that something now let's consider this particular program again and here you can see we have the class definition and within the class definition we have this method now this method exists in its own right it's a piece of code it just happens that that piece of code has been defined within this class now on this line when I execute it and we reflect onto the execution space what's going to happen we're going to have an object created that's going to have the name my object because this here appears in the code as you can see so I have an object here which exists within its own right but of course this object was based on the class that you can see and within that class we can see that we have the definition of a method so on my diagram I'm now going to show that method as you can see appearing here demo underscore method and in brackets we have the word self now this line is going to send a message to this specific object and this object exists in its own right and remember that method exists within its own right as declared in the class but here it is part of the object now the object if you like is a reincarnation of the class but in object form so the word self is here to tell the method look you may have been defined in the class but you belong to this instance so when you now receive the message you're receiving the message as part of this object so self is there to tell the method which particular object it belongs to 
If we now consider this line, which is the message that I've represented in the diagram as shown here, the actual message will cause this method to execute and in the process self will receive the information that informs the method that was declared here as to which object it is tied to. It's tied to this object that's been created. And it's this word self that receives that information. So although when we look at this particular line of code, we don't see anything in this bracket. In fact, what is passed to here will be the information that identifies this specific instance, this specific object. Let's amend the program we've just been considering, as you can see I've done here. And what I've done as part of the definition of the method, I've added this here, print the ID of self. And down here you can see I've asked to print the ID of my object. So when this program actually executes, what we're going to see is this. Now let's explain what's going on one line at a time. The first thing that's going to happen is that this line here is going to execute and we know that that is going to create an instance of the demo class. And we know that this is going to be bound to that instance, to that object. So on this line, I print the ID of that particular object that this name is bound to. And if we have a look at that ID, we can see its value is here and it's 478 one zero two two four now on this line what i'm going to do i am going to send a message to the object just created and this is going to invoke this method and of course what will happen it'll print this string to the screen as you can see here and this line will print the id of self and we can see that that is printed here now we can see that this ID and this one are identical. So what has happened is when this executed, the ID of this object, which we can see from this line, is this value, is passed to self here. Because when I printed the ID of self, we can see it gives us this, which is the same ID as this one here. Consequently, although this was defined in the class, the fact that I've put self here ties this method to the actual object that comes into existence when I use this program statement here to construct an instance. In other words, this function exists in its own right as declared in the class, demo class, but it can be tied to whatever object is created of this class and this self is the parameter that picks up the ID of the object that this method becomes tied to or if you prefer encapsulated within that particular instance of this class. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.